Yeah, I don't care. I don't care if he hit a grand slam. He shouldn't be playing on the team. There's a reason why we cut him. I don't care if you say the thing. Coming to you pre-tape from the Best Coast Show Studios. This is the Best Coast Show. I am your host, Albert Aguilera. That is my producer, Curtis Stage. And with us today, we've got a very special guest, a native of Long Island, a new resident of Los Angeles. He's been here almost as long as me, 24 years. He could run for governor if he wanted to. Rob Rogers. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Rob, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, guys, Rob is a native New Yorker. He is a lifelong Yankee fan, but he lives in Los Angeles, so he gets to go to Yankee games like once every three years when they come to visit. How, how do you feel about that? Like living on the opposite coast? Well, I have been to a Yankee coast. game, and uh, I, I can say I, I was at one game with my. Uh, I, I, we were married at the point at the time, and I got to about the ninth inning, and the Yankees were losing, or maybe even in the eighth. The Yankees were losing. And uh, who's, who's the, the, the guy that came in, the, the pitcher? And the place went ballistic. And I just looked at my wife and I said, we're leaving. And, and, we, and we left the stadium. And we're glad we did because, I mean, it was insanity was, 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 was going on at that well, point. Well, the parking situation and the traffic situation in Dodger Stadium sucks. It's why Dodger fans show up like in the second, third, and we leave in the seventh, eighth. But I also had a kid at the uh, a Dodger fan. I got these tickets from somebody at Fox, and a Dodger fan, a kid, spit on me. A Dodger fan? Yes. Was, that seems about right. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you wearing Yankee gear? Um, uh, probably a hat. Okay. That's that, 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 you can't that wear right. gear. You can't wear. Fair enough. Yeah. Our, our fans are not nice to foreign fans. <laughs> I, I did survive. I know I'm not supposed to mention Anaheim, but we did survive a a game there where the Yankees also lost to Anaheim in the playoffs, wearing Yankee gear, and we did have a bunch of uh, Yankee fans coming up who had been beaten up. Telling my friend and I, oh, we need your help, which which we basically just looked at him and laughed and yeah, don't, went don't, about don't our business. Do that. Guys, don't <laughs> don't attack other fans. I, I want you to yell at them. I want you to tease them, but don't throw things at them. Don't throw food. Don't throw beer because beer is expensive. And just keep your hands to yourself. We talk about this every week. Just assault is not the answer, guys. Come on, let's go. So uh, so Rob, we're going to talk about uh, Donnie baseball today. Donnie baseball to me is Donnie baseball the manager. Donnie baseball to you, a Yankee fan, was Donnie baseball the player. Let, let's let's compare and contrast the two. Well, I mean, growing up as a Yankee fan, you uh, always expected to win. And uh, when, when Don Mattingly came in, the Yankees had uh, spent a lot of money. I mean, it was kind of getting at the end of the Bronx Zoo. Don Mattingly was the man. He came into New York. So you were expecting years and years and years uh, of winning. Every kid went out, got a left-handed mitt was trying to throw left-handed. It didn't look good, but <laughs> but Don Don Mattingly was that guy. Uh, I remember there was one year, he, what, he hit six grand slams in a year. I think it was 87. Major league record. And never hit another one since. So well, not now. He, he manages. Well, fair enough, but he did play <laughs> until 90, what, 95? 95, yeah. He was uh, with the Yankees, 82 to 95. Uh, they made the playoffs one year in 95. Uh, he went ballistic in the playoffs. He lost to the uh, Mariners that year in 95. Lost to the Mariners. He hit like 417. He went, he, exactly, he went off. They won the first two games in New York, and then they dropped all three in Seattle. In yeah. Seattle. Yeah, and, and it sucks because the, the year that the Yankees were great, the year that the Yankees were supposed to go to the World Series because they were so good, was the, the strike year. They were According to baseball writers, they were supposed to play the Expos. That was the World Series that never happened. But, I mean... And I believe also, the, I think the other strike year was, was it in the late 80s? It was one of the strike years where they were going to go. 80s, I don't remember Of that. course you weren't, but there was another strike. You're supposed to do all your research before you have guests come on the I show, don't right? I don't remember the late 80s. <laughs> I'm but, sure you don't either. No, I really don't, actually. No one, no one really remembers the 80s. But, um, I mean, again, Don Mattingly was a type of player that transcended all sports. <laughs> you, if, whether you were a, a, a Dodge, uh, excuse me, a Yankee fan, a Met fan, a Giant fan, a Jet fan. You liked Don Mattingly. I mean, because he was a nice guy. He played the game the way everybody wanted to play it. Um, I mean, I guess he was the last captain before, uh, before, Jeter, before yeah. Jeter came in. So, but then, you know, it dawned on me. And I remember you, you were, you, one day you came in and, and you were kind of... Uh, I was bitching. You were bitching. I was bitching. <laughs> and I was like, what, 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 what's, what's going on? He said, well, the Dodgers this, the Dodgers that. And I just remember looking at it. It just kind of dawned on me. And like, well, what do you expect? Don Mattingly played... For the Yankees, a team that has won the World Series, what, 27 times in about 100 years. And every day, the Yankees have World Series so, championships in every decade, except for the they, 80s. They, and they, that, there's that window, 82 to 95. Nothing. So nothing. why do we think that is? I mean, Don Mattingly here, you know, is it just the players that were around him? Or is it something to do with, I mean... He had great players around him. He had Winfield. I think they had Ken Griffey, a, a senior, at some point. Um, they brought in, uh, I mean, who was it, uh, Rigetti. But then there was, there was a lot going on in New York at that time. For whatever reason, they put Rigetti into the bullpen. 
And at that point, I mean, I remember I, have, I would have a friend that I'm supposed to mention his name today because he's going he's gonna to listen to this on Long Island, Jay Kirshner. And I remember him calling me up in, in Buffalo. I went to school, and we were literally, we, we were, we were kind of talking while the Yankees were playing. It was about the ninth inning. Uh, who, who they were playing is irrelevant. It was probably, the Yankees were winning by three when they brought Rigetti in. And, of course, the Yankees lost the game by one because he gave up a grand slam home run. And Brutal. this Sounds like was, Jonathan Broxton. But this was what happened. This was what was going on in the 80s into the early 90s. And, of course, um, you know, Mattingly, he, he had ended up having the back problems towards the end of the career. Um, some say he was screwing around. I think it was pitcher Bob Shirley, maybe. And th they kind of deny it. There's no, there's no proof about what happened to him. I mean, he played a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, what, 18, 19 yeah. years. Yeah. So, uh, again, going back to you coming in there, and I, I, it just really dawned on me. How do you play for a team that wins it? Every four to five years, you're the greatest player that ever played, but you've never won a championship. And like you said, never even made into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I, I never saw him play, but I'm, I'm looking at this guy's career stats. You look at the, the Yankees retired his number. He must have done something great. But in, in retrospect, you look at it, you're kind of like, okay, you're the greatest regular season guy ever. No success in the playoffs, and that's what bothers me. I, we have no success with him in the playoffs as a manager. If you look at him every year, his win record as a manager gets better. Assuming he gets better, he gets more than 94 wins this year, he'll be the only manager in Major League history to have an improved record for five straight years. The Dodgers in their franchise history have never won their division three years in a row. They're going to do that this year, and because of Don Mattingly. And it's, okay, he, well, granted... Because he, of Don Mattingly or in spite know, of Don Mattingly? Uh, granted, he has a $300 million payroll. He's always had a beefy payroll. That, that does some help, but... I mean, why do you just choke in the playoffs? Why does he get outmanaged in the playoffs? Why can't he manage a bullpen? Is it because he played in the American League as a player his entire life? And then his first, uh, not managerial experience, but his first coaching experience was with the Yankees as a bench coach with Torrey. And you manage bullpens way differently in the American League because you don't take into consideration, hey, he, uh, my pitcher's going to lead off the next inning. Hey, he's in here. But let's get into what is a bench coach to begin with? You, Moral you, support? I mean, I, seriously, what do you do as a bench coach? You sit there and you manage the players who aren't playing? For that day, <laughs> the, it's the pitching coach that goes out and does when, when the first time he goes out, and then the manager walks out there and yanks the. Uh, so, what do you do as a bench coach? And even as a bench coach, he didn't win it with the Yankees. That's true. So they won. They won it in what two thousand with uh, Torrey the last time, and then they won it in what ninety oh, oh, seven well, with the, Girardi. The, yeah. yeah, the most recent time was oh nine. I believe that was the the year uh, that. Uh, oh, was it Arod, Okay, Arod finally got it. He got it with Girardi as a uh, as a manager. Right, Girardi came in in ninety seven and won it probably in oh nine. Yeah, well, and even let's and, talk about that. Girardi got hired over Mattingly to be. I mean, I, I just remember sitting there and when 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 they were interviewing and you know obviously I was out here and you're hearing on the radio and all the talk shows are talking about it. and and that's probably one of the first times that I, I thought to myself I I don't want Don Mattingly as the manager I didn't know why I didn't want him and then when again it, it got kind of clarified when you came in and we're talking and that's when I really came up with that theory of that whole which not a theory I mean it's all over the you know internet everywhere that Mattingly is the greatest you know Yankee to ever play that never won a World Series yeah so I, I remember though sitting there saying I would I want Girardi Girardi came in, no stats. He came in, what, from the, where did he come from? The Cubs, maybe? He came in as a player. In his second year, he wins a World Series as a catcher. He, he caught um, a couple of, uh, I know he caught a couple of no-hitters. I forget whichever yeah. pitchers he caught. He's kind of like A.J. Ellis on the Dodgers now. I mean, A.J.'s not a great catcher, but he's, he handles the pitchers really well. And, you know, he's a baseball mind. Girardi's a baseball mind. There's something about catchers that— Tory. Baseball mind. Right? Another catcher. Another. I mean, we catchers well, make good managers. Matheny, Bochi, we've you know, all these managers of one World Series recently have been catchers. And Torrey also came from the uh, National League before That's right. he He's on ended the Braves. Up, right, yeah. exactly, as a, as a manager. Which goes to your point of there is, some, there is something to be said, obviously, about a catcher and having the experience of being in the, uh, in, in the National League. Because you you are not dealing with the scenarios in the American League that you are dealing with, right? And you don't think it's a little weird? I mean, I I don't know the kind of players he had on his team, but you know, eighty they they go to the World Series eighty one, they lose to the Dodgers eighty two to ninety five was the dark era. It was the the black ages for the Yankees. Ninety six, they immediately win a World Series. You got Jeter who takes over, but you look at these teams late ninety early two thousands when that that dynasty of the but, Yankees came out. David Wells, Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit, Bernie Williams. Uh, but also and that, David Cohn but, was on that team. But that's going to go back really more to um, uh, Steinbrenner. That's the GM being and Steinbrenner. pushed out of the team because he had yeah. been meddling trying to get dirt on uh, Winfield. 
and he basically got banned from, I don't know, baseball, but definitely from the Yankee front office. So the Yankees at that point made a commitment to bring in their players up through the minors. And that's when you saw Posada, Bernie Williams. I mean, the, the guys that they went out and got, which obviously Mattingly's replacement was uh, Tino Martinez. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they brought in Paul O'Neill. These weren't superstars, per se. They were quality players. They became superstars in that, <clears throat> in that realm. They became superstars, but they were not brought in. So th there were always th there's always this, this uh, you know, the, the waning of the Yankees where they, they have the years where they're trying to, to buy the championship. And I think the Red Sox got into that as well. And it, it, it That's what we're doing now. It falters. I mean, I think you know, baseball is among probably any sport. Chemistry is, is one of the most uh, important elements in baseball. You've got to have players that can, that can support each other. And I guess, you know, just getting back to Manley, the point is, I, I read, uh, you know, doing some research last night, I saw a quote by Kershaw, which you have... Yeah, uh, which I, I had up right here. I can read it to you guys. This is, uh, guys, this is the quote from, uh, from Kershaw, as we all saw the other day, he kind of just... Um, let go. He says, quote, he's so positive. All he asks for in us is just to go out there and give him our best and play with what we're supposed to do. Do the right things on the field, and he's happy with you. When it's simple like that, it's easy to play for, and it's fun to play for. But as I was telling Rob, you know, what's fun, winning is fun. Losing in October is not fun, right? Championships are fun. Champions. You're getting paid a lot of money to have fun and play a child's game and win. <laughs> You're not getting paid to lose or be mediocre or make it to the playoff. Well, winning a division is nothing. And there's another thing, too. I mean, the mindset, I think, is an interesting thing because Mattingly not winning on the big level, he's gotten close uh, as a manager, player, not, you know, close too. And Kershaw's in the same boat right now. I mean, I think your team takes on the, the, they take on the mold of the manager. And if the manager is not, I'm not saying Mattingly's not a winner, he's, he was a professional athlete, so he's really good at what he did. But he doesn't have that same that passion. I mean, you know, Lasorda, people hate him, love him, but at least he, he had passion. He had I mean, passion. he had drive. And I think this speaks to why they obviously went with uh, Girardi. He had won. Uh, he came in he, in his second season. He had won. He had been with pitchers who who were winners. And again, yes, Mattingly, I think, is still beloved in New York. Um, I don't think that would ever change. I mean, that's the way the Yankee fans are. The, the history of the Yankees, obviously, you know, we have to obviously throw a shout out today to uh, Yogi Berra. Yeah, Yogi Berra. Um, I, I mean, the Yankee history is, is so steeped in, in, the, in the culture. Uh, once you are in that, you, you are loved. Now, what is it about Don Mattingly, though? And hopefully, I, I do hope that one day he wins as a Dodger. I'm not a, uh, a Dodger hater. I mean, I, I grew up spoiled as a Yankee fan, you know, the last few years. Uh, it got to the point where in October I was actually happy that we weren't in the in the playoffs because it was destroying. You can't say that. <laughs> how are you, you going to say that? Because it was uh, there were days where I was actually I'm gonna, and I'm actually going to tell this story on air now because there were days we would go out and it was always on Halloween and we would have to go trick or treating and now at that time my daughter was two and I'm trying to go trick or treating around the block as fast as I can because I can get back and watch this game. Yeah. And two years in a row I had her in a little sled and I actually hit the curb at the wrong angle and I dumped her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So when the, when the <laughs> following week, <laughs> so that's you, awesome. But you got to back in time, and they lost the game. Oh, wow. oh, see, that's what makes it worse. Well, they, at least they lost a series because it was the series. I guess was uh, the last couple of series against Detroit, mm -hmm. where they weren't winning. And I think this also gets to a point where we, you know, with with managers as a whole, and I think Manley fits into this perfectly. When Kershaw gave up the three run home run to help me out here, in, Adams against, on the Cardinals. Against yeah. The Cardinals. Yeah. Okay. He had already given up a home run in the beginning of the game. Don't you, aren't you supposed to have a feel at some point? I don't think that there was a person watching that game Should've that said, out. take Kershaw out. Yeah. And I think it's the same thing back in the days when the Red Sox and Yankees were playing and they left um, uh, Rivera in too long. Rivera uh, was, is the best, obviously the best closer in the, in the game of baseball. But when you left him in for two innings against the Red Sox... It's, it was just psychological. You knew he might break. It just spelled disaster. I and mean, obviously, you know, the Yankees lost that series. You know, never, no team has ever given up a three-game series, you know, gone up to, and then lost in a, in a seven-game series. So there was something to be said about that. And I, and I think that that's something, like, how is Kershaw left in that game? Now, maybe your bullpen was so weak, obviously, that he didn't have anywhere yeah, that, to go Yeah, that's through. how people defended Don Manningly, where you only can play the players that you have, and our bullpen was garbage last year. But, and it's very Jekyll and Hyde this year. But for instance, what's going to lead us to our gift of the day is Kershaw the other day gets pulled out in the fifth inning, and he, he wasn't, granted, he wasn't pitching his best game, 
Uh, but he gets pull- never Kershaw never gets pulled out in the fifth inning, and you know this is a time where okay, Mattingly now Mattingly got bailed out by Chris Izzy, but in the Dodgers scored six runs, but but you never pull out your guy in the fifth. So it's either he pulls him up, pulls him out too late or pulls him out too but he early. Pulled, but he left. But he leaves him in in a game that ultimately decided the series. Yeah. If they yeah. win that game, they can go on to win the series. They win that series, they're probably in position to win. The World Series. Yeah. And that got into Kershaw's head, too, and and probably the whole team's head. Because when your leading player kind of is down and out, then the rest of the team kind of follows suit. Yeah, and if you guys uh, saw the game, uh, Clayton Kershaw ripped into Don Mattingly and it fired up the team. Eventually, the team scored six runs in that inning. Kershaw got the win. But that's going to lead us to the gift of the day. Um, this is us living vicariously through Clayton Kershaw. Anytime he wants to yell at Mattingly, we are yelling at Mattingly, and it makes us feel a lot better. Uh, guys, but that's our show today. Thank you very much for tuning in. That's our uh, guest, Rob Rogers. Rob Rogers, thanks for coming on. That's Curtis Stage. Uh, don't forget to stalk us on Twitter, at Best Coast Show, and uh, you guys have a good night.